Okay, so now we're going to talk about Pareto efficiency, which is basically just another um, another concept, another tool in the welfare economics toolbox that allows us to evaluate markets. And the, the whole point of Pareto efficiency is to see, um, is there a way to, uh, you know, increase the agents in the in the economy, if it's the consumer and the producer, if it's Hawk and Dove, or sorry, I shouldn't say Hawk and Dove, if it's uh, Stanconia and Riggedy Row, or if it's, you know, job seekers and recruiters, um, if those are the agents, how do you increase the, can we increase the agent's utility without um, hurting another agent? So can I take, can I increase the, uh, can I increase Riggedy Rose payout without hurting um, Stanconia? Can I increase um, Marshall, Marshall's utility without taking utility away from Kendrick? Um, and, you know, if you can, if there's a way to increase their utility, then you're becoming more and more Pareto efficient. And once you've reached a pr point of Pareto efficiency, that means in order to make Marshall better off, I have to take from Kendrick. Okay, so it's not an ideal situation to take from Kendrick. So any point where you can um, you can only make another person better off by taking from someone else um, is uh, Pareto efficient. Okay, so let me rephrase that. A point is Pareto efficient if you can't make anybody better off without making someone worse off. So if you have Marshall and Kendrick, and Marshall's got uh, some cars and Kendrick's got some songs, and you have to give cars away, if you have to take cars away from Marshall in order to make Kendrick better, then it's at a point of Pareto efficiency because you can't make Kendrick better without taking away from Marshall. Okay. Let me reiterate that. Pareto efficiency means you're at a point where you can't make somebody better off without making someone worse off. Okay. So if you have to take some from somebody in order to make another person better off, then uh, it's a Pareto efficient point. If you don't have to take from somebody to make someone better off, that means there's still gains from trade on the table. There's still stuff left over. Um, and if there's still gains from trade to be had, then it's not Pareto efficient. Okay. And then this is the part where I typically have the, the people in the class repeat the, uh, the point just to hammer it home because I like repetition. Uh, so at home, I want you to repeat the phrase, Pareto efficiency means you're at a point where you cannot make somebody better off without making somebody worse off. Okay. Pareto efficiency means you're at a point where you can't make somebody better off without making somebody worse off. Okay. Now the next best bullet point in the entire course is the Ninja Turtles. And I put this there so that you remember this slide, so that you can repeat to yourself, Pareto efficiency means you're at a point where you cannot make somebody better off without making somebody worse off. Pareto efficiency means you're at a point where you cannot make somebody better off without making someone worse off. Keep going. Pareto efficiency means you're at a point where you cannot make somebody better off without making somebody worse off. Pareto efficiency means you're at a point where you cannot make somebody better off without making somebody worse off. Okay. And lastly, Pareto efficiency means you're at a point where you cannot make somebody better off without making someone worse off. So let me illustrate what that actually means. Okay. Uh, I say in the Hawk and Dove game, this is actually not the Hawk and Dove game yet. I had to update the slide. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so a point is pretty efficient if you can't make anybody better off without making somebody worse off. So imagine there's eight slices of pizza, and you have three people who all like consuming as much pizza as possible. So they all have increasing utility in pizza. You can divide the pizza any way you want. Are the following uh, divisions of the pizza considered Pareto efficient. Okay. Giving three slices to Joey, two slices to Ross, three slices to Chandler. Okay. So basically it should be Pareto efficient if I can give an extra slice to one of these people, or sorry, it should be not it should not be Pareto efficient if I can give an extra slice to one of these people without taking from one of the other people. Okay. So if I can give Joey another slice without taking away from Ross or Chandler, then it's not Pareto efficient because that means there's still pizza in the box, okay? You're not using up all the resource of pizza, okay? 
So in this case, there's eight slices of pizza, three are going to Joey, two are going to Ross, three are going to Chandler. So all eight slices are had. Um, so you can't make anybody better off without making somebody worse off. Okay. What about if it's two, two, and two? Okay. Well, I could give Joey an extra slice of pizza without taking from Ross or Chandler. Or I could give, you know, I could give Joey two slices. I could give Ross two slices. Uh, I could give Chandler two slices. I can give him one each, you know. There's basically two slices left over that I can divide up any way I want. What about if there are eight slices of Joey? Well, it's not fair, right? Ross doesn't get any pizza. Chandler doesn't get any pizza. But all eight pizzas are being consumed. So in that sense, it's efficient. Someone is gaining, um, gaining utility from the pizza. I can't make Ross or Chandler better unless I take away from Joey. Okay. What about if it's seven slices of Joey, one the Chandler? Again, it's pretty efficient because all eight slices are being eaten. What about six slices of Ross? Well, no, I could give Ross two more slices, and then it'll be pretty efficient. Or I can give one slice to Chandler, one to Joey, then it'd be pretty efficient. But if it's six slices to Ross, there's still um, pizza in the box. Okay, what about this one? Since all eight slices are being eaten, then it's pretty efficient. Okay, so let me give you the answers. So as long as the eight slices are being eaten in this particular example, then something, then the, the division is pretty efficient, even if it's not exactly fair. Okay. Now let's actually move on to the Hawk and Dove game. Okay, so here's the original payouts. In the Hawk and Dove game, which payouts are pretty efficient and why? I'm actually going to stop the video here. I want you to answer um, uh, on Blackboard. So let's stop and uh, you can uh, answer the next questions on Blackboard and then uh, we'll go from there.